And welcome to the Outsider Sports Show. Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groniger are your hosts. We are being joined as we are breaking down the SEC tournament, which starts on Wednesday. None other than Jarrett Sutton, the former Mizzou guard. Jarrett, how's it going, man? You've been uh, keeping yourself busy this basketball season, no doubt. Yeah, I have been busy. There's no question. It's good to be on with you, Clint. Uh, it's been a while, I guess, since we've, we've, uh, we've chatted. But, yeah, a lot, a lot going on. And uh, with it being conference season uh, kind of in play, it's uh, – it's an exciting time. March is here, and um, some some great basketball ahead for sure. Well, yeah, it has been a while, Jarrett. You've uh, gone on to, to greener pastures such as the SEC Network and uh, Sports Radio 810, and we'll never quite be able to forgive you for that. No, I'm we're, we're glad. <laughs> hey, hey, we hear you. We hear you on 810. You're, you've been a regular on there and uh, doing some work for the SEC Network. Did uh, called a couple of Mizzou games actually early in the year on SEC Network Plus. What's that experience been like for you, and how how are you you know enjoying this uh, this broadcasting stuff? I'm enjoying it. It's a different uh, feeling, just kind of a different way to watch a game, I guess. Uh, coming from being a player and then last year working for the Warriors in, in more of a front office role and a scouting role. and Still doing a lot of scouting, but um, I, I definitely enjoy uh, just kind of breaking down both teams. And it's kind of nice when you don't really have, you know, ties to one team. You're just viewing a basketball game for what it is. And um, it's been really enjoyable. Got to do... Uh, Mizzou men's game starting out, which was a great experience. I think I did four or five men's games and then switched over to the women um, during conference season. So it was my first year in broadcasting and um, just finished up, and it was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Got uh, got great experience and worked with a lot of great people. Um, ben Arnett, obviously, was uh, was my partner in crime there with the play-by-play, and he was great as well. So hopefully it will lead to more opportunities down the road, maybe doing some, some full-time next year in, in some capacity. I'm not sure that will be uh, – kind of talked about this off season and, and uh, maybe we'll continue to do that. I'm not sure, but uh, it was, it was a great, great year and, and got uh, good experience and first time ever being on TV, no broadcasting experience. And I thought it went well. Well, there's a reason why someone like you does the TV and someone like me does the podcast. I mean, that's, it, it just sort of works out that way. I don't know how that is. That's kind of not fair, but uh, let's, let's start with a team that uh, you do have ties to. Uh, who will likely be playing their last game either Wednesday or Thursday, the Missouri Tigers. Obviously, just a rough go of it. Uh, three conference wins on the season. Things definitely didn't go as planned uh, during Kim Anderson's first year. Just kind of take us through the season and, and what you saw out of this team and really what went wrong with this uh, with this team this year. Well, it starts, you know, you, you hire Coach Anderson, and, um, you know, he got had to put his, uh, his staff in place, and I know that that took some time. Um, at the start, um, I know they got Techie late in the game. I know they got Tremaine late in the game. And really just kind of put this roster together and, and, and try to just kind of stay afloat uh, at the beginning of the year. And there's really no expectation for me going into it. Um, I, you know, I said at the beginning of the year, I, I wasn't really concerned about wins and losses. I just wanted to see improvement and growth um, throughout the year. And I know that's been tough. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that um, there's been growth throughout the year. I know they went on, you know, the longest losing streak in, in school history, and, and uh, they were able to win a couple of games, you know, against Florida and Auburn to end their year, which I think was positive. I just don't think they could have gone all the way through without, you know, getting a win. That would have been really, really difficult, and they got a chance to maybe win a game in the SEC tournament. We don't know. But, um, you know, when I look back on their year, so many times, you know, you can look at, games where you know they start out the year they lose to umkc at home um, and that was a game i called and really i was i was concerned from from that point going forward i just didn't know what was going to happen i knew that they'd have to respond um and knew that they had a long way to go that they just couldn't roll the balls out and just play they just that, that's that's not what they can do they don't have the the real leadership to do that and and to be honest with you nobody does you can't just roll a ball you got, you got to come prepared every game and I just knew that they were going to have to get over that hurdle. They didn't have any leadership. They had all freshmen and sophomores. And, you know, they had, um, you know, Keith Schamberger, who is a transfer senior. And Keanu Post was, a, you know, a transfer in just his second year and his first year of really seeing significant time. So that was really hard. Um, I thought looking at the Maui Invitational Tournament, I thought they played Arizona really hard in the first half. And then, you know, they have a terrible second half and then get killed by Purdue the next day. It was just a very inconsistent play. Um, I thought once, you know, I thought the Illinois loss and the Oklahoma State loss back to back, you lose by three to Illinois and you lose on a game winner in overtime to Oklahoma State. I thought that really set them back, but then they, they bounced back and they beat LSU to start conference play. And I thought that was going to be huge for them. I thought that might get them up and going. Um, and then you just really never saw them, you know, really kind of 
getting over that. And I think Arkansas, the loss at home on the missed free throws, I think that was like three losses. You know, that yeah. really that really hit them. And after that, they, it was like they were getting blown out of the water. They played tough at South Carolina for a while. Um, they played tough against Mississippi State at home. So you just look at their schedule, and they, they were in games. They had games where they played well, but they had games where they just looked terrible. And that's just inconsistent play. It's a young basketball team. Um, not sure what guys will be around next year. That'll be that remains to be seen um, once this year concludes, and hopefully that some guys will will stay and and realize that you know sometimes that uh, your your problems are going to follow you, and just got to look in the mirror and and try to improve in the off season. It's going to start right when this year ends, and I know they're probably ready to get this season behind them too, and and move on and kind of turn that page and and start building for for next season, and hopefully kind of uh, look back on this as a learning experience and and uh, make sure it never happens again. Well, I want to go back to your uh, freshman year at Missouri and uh, kind of relate it to what's going on now. Now, your freshman year, you, Marcus Denman, Kim English, Lawrence Bowers, those were the freshmen. The difference is you guys had Leo Lyons, Damari Carroll, Matt Lawrence. You had that core of guys that were senior late, a senior-laden team to sort of acclimate you guys in it. These, this group here had nobody, like you said. He Schaumberger, well, he, he'd only been around, you know, as long as they had. He's a senior. But uh, then you had Ryan, you know, Rosberg, who's a junior. But other than that, I mean, how hard is it? I mean, you talk about your group being freshmen and how hard it was it to acclimate to the game and how hard would it have been without the Lions and Carols and, you know, those type of guys. Yeah, I, well, that's a big piece to this year is they just haven't had anybody to look up to and they've been thrown in the fire and they didn't have the luxury that my class did as freshmen when, you know, you mentioned those guys and Leo and, Damari and Matt and Mike Jr., I mean, those guys, and, and even you look at our juniors at that on that team, Zaire Taylor and JT Tiller and Keith Ramsey, and I mean, those guys, and those guys were big parts of that team as well, and they don't even have that, really. Um, so that's tough. I mean, that that's hard when you don't have, you know, guys ahead of you to look up to because, you know, those are the guys that, that make differences in the ball game, and, and that, that freshman year, our year, we you know, we go to the Elite Eight and we have that great run, but, I mean, we did that, and the main guys on our team were Damari and, and Leo. And I know, you know, JT and Zaire had to be part. They were starters and Kim started a little bit. Matt started a little bit that year, but you know, our class, we were all role. I mean, all role players, literally like nobody, uh, Kimmy started at, in conference season, but you know, he split minutes with Matt. I mean, th- that's just kind of Marcus came off the bench. He was great off the bench. He, I think Kimmy and Marcus both averaged like six points a game as freshmen. And they weren't putting up a 20 point, 28 point game like name and right had, but, you know, when you look at the, this team, they've it's, it's kind of a good and bad thing because you see all the freshmen, you know, around the country transfer. They don't go. They're not getting enough playing time. and They're not getting their shots. Well, that's no excuse here. I mean, you had a freshman year where all of you were pretty much either starting, coming off the bench, playing big minutes, big roles. And, you know, this is life in college basketball when you, know, you don't have any leadership and you, know, you lose a bunch of games. That's just unfortunate. You know, you don't – you're kind of – being thrown in the fire and being asked to learn quickly. And again, with us, I mean, we could get, we could kind of come along, you know, by the end of our freshman year, end of conference play, once we got to the, the big 12 tournament, I mean, our coach Anderson always told us like, you're not freshman anymore. You guys are sophomores. Like our freshman year is pretty much over. It's just bonus ball. Now. I mean, we're, we're trying to win games and, and go to the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. But you guys are expected more now because you're not freshmen. You're not. You didn't just walk on campus. Now you're going to be asked to do more. And these guys this year, they're going to be sophomores next year. There's going to be more asked of them next year, and they're going to have to improve. And there is a big jump from your freshman year to sophomore year. You do. It is different. Um, you have that one year under your belt. You have the experience. You know what the fall is going to be like. You know what the season is going to be like. Travel, all that stuff. So that does help. Um, but again, after that freshman year, we had such a great taste in our mouth because. We won. We had success. We went to the Elite Eight. We were, you know, a few minutes away from the Final Four as freshmen. And so when that off season hit, I mean, we took a couple of weeks off, and we were so hungry to get back there. And we ended up didn't. We ended up going back to the NCAA tournament, winning a game our, our sophomore year. But you know, I just don't think these freshmen understand how hard you have to work and, and how much time you have to put in, and how you know you really got to be um, a gym rat and try to improve every year because. You know, you don't want to have those feelings like you had this year with Illinois. You don't want to have those feelings with Oklahoma State. You want to close out games and win games. And to do that, you know, you got to be at your best. Players are, are made in the off season. That's when you really become a player. And the season is just learning and being a team and being on the same page and chemistry and all that stuff. So 
this off season, work really hard and, and get these freshmen right and get them ready to go for next year. We've got to hope that the the core of this team stays together and there's some some talent on this team and uh, you just got to hope that uh, Coach Anderson's able to keep that together. If not, it could be uh, it could get real. Uh, trouble quick. Uh, now I want to go on to the rest of the SEC. Uh, SEC tournament starts on Wednesday. Um, of course, we've got Kentucky, 31-0. and Question one, can anyone beat Kentucky, not only in the SEC tournament, but going forward? Or, I mean, do you expect this Kentucky Wildcat team to run the table and, and finish this thing undefeated for the first time since uh, Indiana did did that feat? Um, I would say, for me, I, I, I think I made this comment about two or three weeks ago. Um, when Kentucky beat Auburn at home, and uh, and then they turned around, I think a week or two weeks later, and did, you know, blew out Arkansas, who you know finished second in the SEC, um, you know, blew them out at home, and they are just a team where they can be down, you know, eight, ten points, you name it. They can, you know, it, the question can come up, oh my gosh, is this the game? Are they going to lose it? And they are so good enough and so athletic enough defensively for the most part to change a game quickly. I mean, I look at, they played at Mississippi State um, a little while ago, and at one point they were down, I want to say, six, eight points with about 12 minutes to play, and four minutes later it was the eight media time out of the second half, and they were up 20. I mean, that's wow. how quick they can change a game. That's how talented they are, and that's how big of a run they can really go on, and it, their defense is so solid, and they have, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, and they have, I love the Booker kid, to be honest with you, he's a great player. Yeah, and me too, I wish he was in Columbia. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and then they got Willie Colley Stein, so they just got weapons everywhere, and I can see them running the table, for sure, I, I, I can see them going, but it would not surprise me if they do get beat, because it's March, anything can happen, I'm not, you know, March Madness, I learned, I've learned enough about the NCAA tournament, I mean, anything can happen, it's just, you play one time, and you got to be at your best, and a team can come in and play their best game they've ever had, and you never know what can happen. So I'm not going to put it by them. They could get beat, but right now they're my, they're my favorite to win the national championship. They're my favorite to win the SEC tournament. I see them going all the way, but it wouldn't shock me if, if somebody maybe bumped them off, and then who knows. Well, let's look at the rest of the conference. I think the conference flew a bit under the radar because there are some teams that look like they're going to get in this thing. Uh, you talk about Arkansas, uh, LSU looks like a sure thing, and beyond that, like, who, who do you think is going to get? And we got, uh, you know, teams like Georgia, Ole Miss, Texas A&M. Is the SEC going to get uh, all those teams in and get six? I mean, how do you see this playing out? Well, I mean, right now I look at it, and a lot depends on the conference tournament. I mean, I, I, I take a kind of a step back, and I don't talk about, you know, teams getting in um, just because – we don't know what's going to happen in, in the conference tournament. Maybe, maybe a team gets knocked out. You know, I, I look at, at where everybody has, has finished, and I mean, you know, Ole Miss still has you know work to do. Where they, you know, they they, they might they might be on the outside looking in. Uh, Texas A&M's had a good run. Um, Georgia's had a good year. LSU put themselves in the tournament with a huge win against Arkansas. So right now, I'm going to say I like six teams to get in. But Ole Miss has to win some games, and, and A&M I'd like to see win a game. And, you know, you got to think, if you look at the, the, the tournament bracket, you know, these teams might have a chance to, to, to meet each other, and, and who knows what could happen there. But um, I would want Georgia or I'd like to see A&M or Ole Miss have a, a win or two in the SEC tournament to get them in. And, and right now, I mean, you know, I, I have my Mizzou ties, but just looking at this conference, it's it's been a good good league. It really has. They've beat up on each other just like every conference has, and there's been games that don't make sense, really. I mean, yeah. there's there's just this, you know, past week, LSU wins at Arkansas, but they lost at home to Tennessee and, and got beat pretty badly. And then they go to Arkansas, and they don't have Jordan, you know, Mickey, and, and they play well and win a huge game on the road. So, it's just been very unpredictable, but I see six teams getting in. Um, but, again, it just depends on how they play this week in the tournament because that really makes a difference. Um, how you, If you can win a game, even two, solidify yourself, and then you, know, you have a resume there that might be able to get you in. Well, we'll see how things play out, and it's good to have uh, some meaning going into this uh, SEC tournament uh, in Nashville, a great city, one of my favorite cities in, in America now. Uh, another tournament that has some meaning, and uh, you'll be doing some, you know, some work with the Big 12 tournament this weekend uh, in Kansas City. And I and I'll admit, I definitely miss 
that atmosphere in Kansas City and you guys, uh, it seems like longer than three years ago that you guys were hoisting the Big 12 championship uh, during Missouri's last season in the Big 12. But uh, see, tell us how you see the Big 12 playing out and uh, how much fun it is, you know, being down at Sprint Center and Power and Line. It's just, it's just an awesome place to have it, even if, even if, if there isn't a uh, Big 12 team in the state of Missouri, you know, forget about that. Yeah, it's um, it's my favorite conference tournament. Um, and again, I'm biased. I played at Missouri. I, I was, you know, in my four years, I was in the Big 12, and Big 12 tournament being in my my hometown um, for three of those four years was, uh, you know, so I, I have some some ties to that and being able to work this. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, you know, first day starts tomorrow. Kansas State, TCU, and Texas and Texas Tech and. You know, those are those are good games. I think. I mean, Kansas State and, and TCU. TCU beat Kansas State, you know, early on, and you know, Kansas State has a chance to match up with with Kansas on Thursday, and then uh, maybe Texas and Iowa State. So, um, you know, there's there's some good games that are that are going to be in this tournament. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State Thursday will be a good one. Um, we'll see how this this plays out. I mean, we'll see how Perry Ellis is feeling. Um, he's a huge part of Kansas. Is, you know, production and, and to see just, you know, how good of a coach Bill Self is just when, you know, they go to Oklahoma and they lose at Oklahoma, but they have guys step up playing roles kind of used to. Kelly Oubre from where he is, you know, now to where he was at at the beginning of the year is night and day different. You know, they get a great play from Frank Mason at the point. Um, you know, I had Brandon Green suspended and you know, he's their big kind of three point shooter and he didn't play against Oklahoma. They still have a great game. So, They've just had guys kind of step up when they've needed it, and that's a sign of a good basketball team. They they can Kansas can win games when they don't play well, and that's a sign of a good team. That's a sign of a good defensive team. So we'll see how they 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 bear. I like Iowa State a lot, but they give up too many points, and when yeah. they you know try to outscore a team, and that's all they they don't guard. Uh, I don't like them, you know. And, and Oklahoma's been been great, and uh, Oklahoma State when really you got three players for Oklahoma State that have really you know, been their team, and then they have role players everywhere. They've done a nice job. So it'll be a fun tournament. I'm looking forward to it. Um, the fans in Kansas City, it's its the biggest weekend, I think, in Kansas City as far as just a, a weekend with sports and great weather and spring kind of kicking off. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And I expect big crowds. Iowa State travels well. Oklahoma State travels well. I expect a lot of Oklahoma fans as well. So um, just a lot of good games. Uh, Baylor, West Virginia on Thursday will be great too. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, Jarrett, we'll definitely be listening this weekend on Sports Radio 810 as you, uh, you know, help uh, analyze the action down in, in Kansas City. You can't wait. Always great to hear from you, Jarrett. Uh, your, your stuff's impeccable. Yeah, you know it. And, uh, man, we can't appreciate you enough. We'll definitely uh, be talking again in the near future, probably running into you at the gym. And we kind of those are, those conversations, of course, are those are off the record. You know, we don't uh, – we never bring those up again, thank goodness. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it's, it's great being on with you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you having fun. All um, right. It should be a fun weekend, and, and definitely I uh, would love to join you again sometime. Absolutely. Have fun down uh, down at uh, Power and Light this weekend in Kansas City at uh, the Sprint Center, and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon, my man. Uh, have a good one. All right, All right Clint. Thanks. Thanks a lot.